by the time I was 15, I was number one on the charts with a rock band in Detroit. We got together in 58. By 60, we were top 40 for one year on the charts and number one for several months. And Bob Dennis knows Jerry uh, LaCourcier, who was our manager, now is the president of AM Canada, and uh, uh, Gordy Prince, who came from Motown and was one of the promotion men for Motown, and now promotes most of the rap stuff that's going on. And because he's an old geezer that don't know what's going on except he knows what's happening. <laughs> right? Yeah, he, he's, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, they got what's going on. Okay, we'll put them out. You know, I was one of those guys, you know, like uh, uh, in, in, in the uh, 50s and 60s. And now he wouldn't even look at me. You know, because some people just want that young teeny bop energy and that's all they're going to capitalize on that. And other people want artistry and music. And as you grow older, you're going to, your attitudes are going to change. Your angst is going to change. Your, you know, your, what you want to convey is going to change. And the music that you like is going to modify if not change. Okay, so let's get the beat. Give me the tempo. So now that's the back beat. Let's everybody give it to him. being uh, like uh, this uh, song that we're recording. We, we got into this here. Yeah. And, and you liked it because everybody was, you know, like in time and rhythm and the voices were there and, and it became fun. That's what you got to capture on the tape. The fun. Right? You know, and um, look at Louis Armstrong. In his day, he was what you're doing like now. You know, he was like new. You know, on the edge, right? <coughs> and uh, he, he's bringing in the lyric, and it drops. And they're doing their recording. Says, "Let's do that." Then I did the lyric, right? Back into the lyric, right? Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the whole thing was really nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right there became his hit, right? Yeah. right? yeah. <laughs> so. You're distracted by your preconception not being written on paper and not memorizing your conception. You, know, you conceived an idea, 
You got it on paper? Yeah. Where is it? <laughs> now, see, this is a part of production. Okay, you got your lyric? Yeah. Ah, see, now, okay, see this? Hard to read. So, you know, now you got to start. What's going to make you feel like you're a musician, a rapper, a producer, a thing, okay, is when you start uh, putting your life into uh, a order. Right on the bars. Uh, you, you, you start writing them in bars. Uh, you have a computer? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Will you do uh, uh, All kinds of stuff. <laughs> like? Um, type on school stuff over. Well, type your songs up. Right? right? Every single one of them. Have you, my wife comes to the gig, the song. Some of my songs are so simple. You know, they, they ain't got a lot of words in them. And then a few of them have a few more words, right? But she's got every single one of them right there. Because after not doing it for a month, you may, you know, sort of like, right? Mm -hmm. So she so she has a, a black book with, with typed out in big letters. So she could put it over there, you know, and not even sort of like worry about it, but the letters are so big if she needs to look at them, they're there. Before the show, she like looks at her thing, you know. But you start um, memorizing it until uh, you want this here to formalize it, and, and, and then you start having your uh, formal uh, song sheets with bottoms and everything, right? And now you're going to have order. Now, actually, your thought is going to manifest into an actuality. Right? Uh, we, we usually want to manifest it so fast if we get to the point of what we were just doing. You see, we had the groove in the Canada, and everybody had that going, right? But you didn't have this ready to do it to it. Okay? Now, that's not bad. And you wrote a nice rap. And it's very good, and I congratulate you. Okay? I'm not putting it down. I'm raising it up. I'm not trying to tell you to do uh, something the way uh, I do it in the sense of change this. I'm saying just put this into a format. And then you're going to start saying, oh, wow, I have 23 formats. A sage once told me. Now, I met this uh, Swami Jyoti and Tilak from India. And um, I lived in a yoga monastery for years and meditated seven hours a day, trying to find myself and God in my heart, and was celibate for two years, and really tried to search and didn't play drums except just to uh, honor God in chanting and drumming. And that's the only, so I only would have a little hand drum. As a result, in meditation, I got the idea of this drum while I was in the monastery. It was downloaded like into my brain by the spirit, and I went and got a patent on it. It took me 17 years to develop it and get a patent, and 23 years to get it on a, not a Grammy-nominated album with Jerry Garcia. So I followed my bliss. I followed my dream. I went 17 years of nothing, I put in nothing but money, 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 money. People thinking you're an idiot, right? And uh, and then. But 22 years later, you have this new drum that you can play. That I play with George Clinton. I play with, with Garcia before he passed. You know, and and, and it's here. Um, you, so these ideas, they're ideas. They're, they they come. They're visions, songs, and things that producers get. And what you want to be able to take is that idea and that vision. The first thing that the lawyer says to me when I went to a lawyer when I had my idea, he says, "Well." Draw it. Write it. Can I see a picture of it? Man, I went to the hardware store and found me used parts. I went to the pipe store. I went to the, uh, you know, plastic place. And I went and I manifested one, even though it sounded crappy because it wasn't exactly where it was supposed to go. But that lawyer could see what I was going after. And um, I got my patent. Because I manifested. Everything is a thought manifested through action. So you got to act upon this. And when you act upon, oh, I got that song, oh, I wrote it down, first step, now I got to take this here, and the minute you go to your computer, you go, you know, you start putting that in, right? Then, it's, it's really a song. Then you take it to the next level, and you go and copyright it. Huh? Okay, so now you own it, and if I go now, now I go 
to an artist or to a, someone who is interested in producing me or is interested in producing my songs and they say, how do I know that's yours? You know, I mean, come on, you know, you're going to come up with some melody and some song and say, hey, you know, what was your thing again? Candy, right? Uh, what's the difference between that and Candyman? <laughs> you know, is that yours? You know, they're going to go, okay, okay the melody melody's different, it ain't, it ain't the same. Oh, you got a copyright? Oh, okay. Uh, it's in your name? Oh, okay. I, I, I just got a... a, a we got fifteen thousand dollar advance for a drum album that I did with Baba Olatunji, and I had to everybody that gave me money. I had to get a signed release. Everybody that's on it, we had to give a signed release and sign the contract, and it had to be verbatim. That 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 that. Mr. Kroslowski, who wrote the music of business book, okay, did the whole transaction, and uh, this was just a little minor little thing because it usually handles hundreds of thousands of dollars. But this is a thing that Chesky Records is going to put out. And it's just $15,000 advance for a small drum trance album. But every point of that business had to be taken care of. And there could not be no illegal loopholes in that whatsoever. Otherwise, they weren't going to touch it. Right down to how it words what it's going to say on the album thing, I have to okay it. Everything has to be, because they don't want nobody suing them. Right? But the good thing about it is, is that shows you own it. So I want you to go from self-realization to ownership of that self-realization. You know, you, you, you realize things in yourself that are songs and raps, and now I want you to take them, type them into a computer. That's you got them. They're not just for games. <laughs> They're not just to... Right? Not just. They're to get you copyrighted too. So all of that. How you play these beats is what makes you different than anybody else. What you leave out or what you put in makes you different from anybody else. How you emotionally treat this is going to make you different from anybody else and is going to make someone want it or not want it. You know, if you're into Rasta music, you're going to know if that is really good Rasta music and if you want to even consider it that enough to be Rasta music, right, to, to say that it is. You know, before you're going to even listen to it, you know, too much, you want to know that this guy's for real right on with his stuff, you know, right? Uh, when I did the Shaman uh, album, we didn't call ourselves shamans, right? We just said, that this is an influence from his shamanic background and my yoga background, and we are putting it into our music this way, and we see how we are all one. <laughs> so now none of the shaman elders who came down on a lot of people in the 80s on people who were doing shamanic calling themselves shamans and his uh, last name was uh, you know Kralowski <laughs> <laughs> right they say hey, who said you're a shaman who said you could uh, uh, represent our spirituality right you'll get that they didn't say that to us because we knew how to word it right as a producer. We had to know how we were approaching that territory. Right? I'm going to walk into a music store. And I want to know, I'm going to ask you just one question. I don't want to know a, bu a bunch of things. I want you to tell me one, just one question. Answer one question. I'm going to go into the music store and we're going to simulate that I'm going into the store to buy the album that you produced. Okay, so you got it. You all produced the dream album, the style of music that you want to do, the whatever it is, the, you know that that you want to produce or play yourself. And I want you to answer to me when I walk into Borders or whatever kind of store it is. It could not be. It, it may be alternative stores, you know, that have New Age or or alternative. When I walk into that store, I want you to tell me under what section I go to to buy the album that you just produced. Okay? I walk into the store, what section do I go to find the album that you're going to produce? Is it under country, rock? Is it under uh, new age, uh, classical, uh, you know, uh, techno? You, you know, 
those are the only labels. I mean, there's only so many labels in a store. This is what I'm driving at. Bakken 127 with a, 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 a guy playing Fender bass from the American Symphony. Drinking wine and playing Fender bass, you know, with a fuzz tone to the Bakken Tata. You know, and, and, they, and Paul Winter wanted me to put a Proclo Harem whiter shade of pale beat to the Bakken Tata. <laughs> right? Uh, so, but we didn't say where we wanted to go, so they put us under easy listening. <laughs> okay? Just because it had some classical musicians on it, but they didn't hear the other thing that was trying to happen, right? No so I'm going to walk into a store. So, so, so not, so being invasive, you know, oh, oh I, I'm this, oh, I, I'm that, oh, no, well, uh, you know, I, when I played with Weather Report, I'm sorry, excuse me, I, I showed him about 20 songs that I recorded. I wanted the producer to produce me. And every song was a different bag. One was rock, one was funky, one was new aging, one was shamanistic. You know, I had all of these, you know, idioms. One was free jazz, you know, I'm playing. I said, see, I could do it all. He says, yeah, I can see that. Which one are you? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you got to go into a store and there's only one place I could find you. That's under the labels that they put in the store. So as a producer, do you know the label that you're going to produce? Are you producing soul music? Rock? What? What is it? Rock. Christian. Or Hip-hop. 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 Rhythm and blues. So. Fantastic. You see, now I know you even better. Right? You see? Whether it's in the world, or out of the world. Whether it's Christ, Buddha, Krishna, or atheist. Eighth notes are eighth notes. Sixteenth notes is sixteenth notes. Thirty-second notes is thirty-second notes. Triplets is triplets. So we will all be using them, no matter what. Ah, uh, uh, Donna, pull yourself together.